So in the meantime, I'm going to be uh, hanging out with Pacer, talking about the picks. So Pacer, um, you are quite a draft aficionado, are you not? I, I have drafted before. I would not call myself an aficionado. Well, <laughs> my experience with you is that you're a really big fan of evaluating cards, and that's what I'm looking forward to hearing from you the most. Oh, yeah, I, I love to do it. Uh, sit around, just I love evaluating the, the bad cards more than the good cards because those are kind of easy. The bad yeah. cards, we're the worst cards, but for draft, it's, it's, it's a completely different beast. Sure. So, uh, real quick, for anybody who in the stream who is not familiar with draft, uh, I'll go ahead and explain the rules real quick. Uh, first, what's going to happen uh, is we uh, have so this is a cube draft, so it's hand assembled. We're not using the draft packs, um, and this comes from the stimhack.com cube. And uh, the way it works is that each player gets a, a set of 40 cards, both from the court and from the runner side. And then uh, for each round of drafting, they pull 10 cards off that stack of 40. Uh, and then add, that's basically like their booster pack. And uh, then they draft from that, pass to the left, uh, and then continue doing that until they've drafted those 10, then go on to the next pack and draft to, uh, pass to the right until they've drafted 40 cards. Uh, and then that's their corp deck, and then they do the same with the runner deck. And they have also a set of starters that have them some for some basic uh, economy and like basic breakers and agendas, depending on the side. Uh, and then they play some games. Um, also, the other thing to keep in mind with draft is that games go to six uh, rather than to seven points. Um, and I think that's basically the only thing. Is this a uh, cube up through Universe? Yes, it is through Universe of Tomorrow. Okay. Um, and uh, the person that we are going to be following for this cube is going to be Corey Hockman, our, uh, our fearless SMC leader. Um, so while uh, Jeff uh, manages the, the draft itself and he's going to be explaining the rules to them right now, we are going to be following along uh, with Corey's picks. We've got his hand cam here, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, what he drafts. So, Pacer, you talked a little bit with uh, with Aaron um, about what you look for. Let's start with the corp side. So, what was it that you look for? Again? Uh, economy is my first thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, economy. I mean, I guess like a sand sand or uh, maybe a bodic labor might be up there, but for the most part, it's uh, Jackson's pretty high up on the list. Uh, Caprice, I could see that, but for the most part, it's going to be economy. Yeah. So economy, uh, in, like what are there specific kinds of economy you look for, or just any economy will do? I, I, I th uh, talking with some other people before, uh, I prefer burst economy mm -hmm. uh, in draft, uh, just because it goes so quickly, it can. Uh, but drip economy is what some people say are a little bit better. It's, it's probably six and one half dozen of the other, just more depends on your play style. Uh, but beanstalk royal, uh, like beanstalk, uh, whatever it's called, uh, royalties, I love. <laughs> Uh, hedge fund, of course, is awesome. Uh, pad campaigns, and I think with a corp, you start with two pad campaigns as your. Uh, uh, I believe it's private contracts. It's a private contracts. Yes. Okay, so you start with two private contracts, and uh, the other thing you start with is uh, priority wrecks. Okay. And I like to get those out of my deck. I don't want to play with any of those, uh, so I try to draft agendas. So, so we're already here into the uh, the first pack, and. Uh what do we see here? We see uh, it looks like a Merlin, an interns, a Philotic, a Nisei, a can't looks tell like no the economy eyes. though. So he doesn't really look like any economy. Sundu, Sundu Sundu's like not good in draft from my experience. Uh, it just costs too much. And you don't get an immediate return on it. Uh, probably the Philotic looked really good it right like there. Looked like he pulled a Lotus Field, I think. I think was so. Right? I think so. I think it was a Lotus Field. Okay. And here we go. Uh, uh, accelerated beta test is pretty decent. Is that Gillahans? Uh, Gillahans looks I really good. I think that's good. a genetic resequencing. That is n oh, the far left. Oh, the far left. Oh, yeah, that is a Gillahans. So yeah, that's actually not bad. I think that that'd be an awesome pick. Pop up is really good too. Uh, so what kind of ice do you look for? It looks like he's taking a wrap around. Like wrap around. Uh, pop ups, pups, architect. Um, you don't want stuff necessarily that will end the run. You want stuff that will dissuade them from running. Sure. <laughs> so, you know, like Architect is great for that. Uh, you go the next route. Next route will be very easy to do. Uh, so next bronze and next silver. Uh, I think that was a Will-O-Wisp he picked up. Uh, I, uh, I was typing. I missed it, unfortunately, but I'll write it down. There is no economy. Yeah, no economy so far. I would imagine that might have been one of the first things to go. A Turing is not bad here. Uh, is that Enigma? Enigma is probably a little bit better. Uh, 
it looks like a hive, which I don't particularly like hive. Yeah. Is that uh, what he took a hive? Okay. No, I think he took a, I think he took uh well, It's uh, really hard to see what he's picking really fast. Oh, yeah, he's going fast. But, uh, no, he did not take the hive. He okay. took the uh, Enigma, I believe. Uh, that's not a bad choice. So... And it's really interesting in draft, uh, the, your thought process, uh, because, like, you can't just assume, oh, they're probably going to be have Yogg, and so Enigma's not very good. Like, you have to pick binary ice. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, it's, you, you can, hmm. it, it's just hard sometimes, because you want, like, you see this flashy card that's good and, and you know, uh, uh, a constructed deck, but... Not quite good in draft because mm -hmm. it does really go a lot quicker. Sarugi is really good, right? Uh, Sarugi is pretty decent right there. That's a restructure. I would s snap take that. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, he's thinking about it. I can't tell what these ice are, but yeah. Uh, Sarugi is the only one I could really tell. Um, that... A whaling card that has a lot of text on it. A uh, piece of ice. I'm not sure. Um, I couldn't see which one. So well, another note is I don't know which way we're playing, but usually traditionally you're not allowed to look back through what your cards are. Yeah, it's pretty hardcore. Uh, if you go that route, I think you need to allow the players, you know, enough time to draft and, and think about it and then it, time in between rounds. I'm personally go more of the boat. Just you can look at what you draft, just draft quickly sure. and go through it. Um, but, you know, it depends on how serious you want to be about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, but if you're not looking back, you got to keep track of how many agendas you've taken. You got to keep track of your ice count, and you got to keep track of uh, your economy count and your assets account. You know, you got to keep track of everything. That looks like a really. So we got traffic accident, lab dog. I think market research and private security force. I think. Yeah, it's very. I think I think I take the traffic accident just to get it out of the pool. Um, oh, so hate draft that one? Yeah, just because there's nothing else there that's really does anything. Um, yeah. Lab dog, I don't think would do much in a like it could kill the one person that got a really good console, like it really surprised sure. them. But other than that, it's not doing a lot. Uh, closed accounts is interesting. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I think I take the closed accounts and maybe grab some hunters or something. They come around and try to go like a, a, a tag taxing a little bit, have a little bit of bite with it. I think I take the interns. Yep, yep. interns seems like a snap keep there. Contract Killer wouldn't be bad. I'll never play with it in draft, so that's interesting, but interns is never a bad card. Uh, even if you're using it to install a piece of ice two or three deep, you, you know, it's a double, sure, but you save some credits, so it's not what that bad. What are you bad. stuck with? Psychic graphics. <laughs> uh, that's, that's interesting. Uh, so what do you uh, learn from the draft as, uh, as you're going on? Like, in terms of what people are picking. Like, the fact that he got stuck with the psychic graphics, does that tell you anything? Uh, nobody's really going uh, heavy tag punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't see a lot of grail, so somebody's probably doing grail. Um, and he has a fetal, a daily business show. I think I take the daily business show. Seems I didn't good. see any economy. Motion's kind of weird. Uh, it actually might work well in draft. You can just motion out something real quick and then throw a piece of Enigma or a Quandry down in front of it and probably score it out really quickly. Um, a fetal is interesting. That's a, that's a pretty Looks decent like one, going too. For too. Uh, the other card that, that in draft that I try to I tend to value pretty high is Snare. Yeah. Uh, just because it can wreck the runner at the right time. Even mm -hmm. if it doesn't kill them, it just makes them dis uh, disrupt uh, uh, their hands so much. Yeah, Celebrity Gift yeah. right there. Giving up the bill, and that was a pretty decent pack. Yeah, uh, that's something that heck can happen sometimes when uh, when you draft, you just get randomly really good packs. Well, when a cube draft, at least. But uh, uh, it'd be really cool if Corey was fanned out his hand and let us look at everything. <laughs> but uh, it's like he knew he was being filmed or anything. I don't know, but you know, whatever. Uh, so I know what some people do when they draft is uh, they look through the pack, then they pull out the the cards that they're interested in, and then like they put it at the top. Ooh, government takeover. Oh. I think I go with the Philotic here. That seems decent. Atlas isn't bad. I can't. I don't know. I couldn't really tell the ice. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, you'll get ice, and 
I would not say you usually win your games on ice. I think I think you win your games more on your agenda density and your uh, economy. Snugs an atlas there. Yeah, that's fine. He's going a bunch of three twos, which uh, if you can take if you can get enough of them, so where the runner has to score at least three times, that puts a lot more pressure on the runner because you know it's, the runner's economy is not great either. Their breaker suite's not great, you know. So you got crappy eyes, they got crappy breakers. You know, kind kind of puts a uh, the runner can't dominate the game that easily unless they just open up some really good cards. Mm -hmm. Hunter's an interesting piece of ice that if you see it. I think I, I might take that pretty early on. Uh, one res cost and it's uh, it's going to tax them. They're 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 not going to run into that regardless of how much tag punishment you have. It's just a good deterrent to keep the runner off your back. Uh, unfortunately, it makes it hard to score. You know, you can't use the score out of a remote, but that's what, you know, you want to try to grab, you know, probably three to five pieces of ice that, that you feel safe putting into a remote and scoring out behind. Uh, or you want to have enough traps and stuff where you could, you know, play the shell game. Uh, there's a couple different ways to go. Um, I've seen a lot of really uh, interesting kill decks for the corpse side, just, you know, uh, TGBT into... Uh, a scorched earth and mm -hmm. stuff like that, but uh, I tend not to go that route, just especially in an eight-person draft, uh, just because if one other person goes that route, you know the the, the card pool is going to be pretty diluted for you, and it'd be hard to hard to focus on that. Yeah. So, but you see how quickly you've noticed in the the, the first pack that went around how quickly the economy dried dried mm -hmm. up. That's that's what I'm saying. Like you, you can't let can't let that go by you you have to have a real good reason not to take a beanstalk or a pad campaign or something and caprice jackson both those are good arguments against it but for the most part i'd go with the econ seems fair it looks like there's a little bit of a backup here i think uh, it's uh and i think they so this is pack number two of their uh, of their four packs and i think they are passing to the right at this point so I yeah think, uh, Corey is waiting on his neighbor so you're going to get 40 cards. You're going to have uh, two private security forces. So it's 42 cards to build your decks out of, and you got to accommodate you know, your agendas in there. Mental Health Clinic's pretty good right here. Ash is decent. Looks like he's going with the Ash. Yeah. So, I think I'd go to the Mental Health Clinic, but... Yeah, so, how, I mean, how does something like Ash work when you might be starred for economy? Uh... It, it, if you can't afford a resident, it doesn't do anything. Sure. <laughs> That's a shipment from Sansan. I like that a lot. Uh, that can, you know, the runner can look at you and be like, oh, he doesn't have any crest to score or anything. All of a sudden, you can ship it from Sansan and surprise score. But uh, Ash isn't bad. It can uh, it, it can be used early on, and, you know, pretty aggressively. But uh, I would have taken the mental health clinic over that. Mm -hmm. Um so, do you when you go into a draft, uh, do you have a particular strategy? I mean, sure, go for econ, but I, I, I like next. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like to do anything really cute. I uh, just like basic taxing ice, uh, uh, some decent. Um, if I see an early something like you know, early Eliza's toy box, I might play around with that. Mm -hmm. Social demonstration, I think, is good here. But no, oh, Gillahan's not Gillahan's. Is he taking it back? He's maybe, about maybe, it. maybe he heard me. No, it's not. Oh, no. And the Viper's not bad either. That was actually a pretty good pack. And yeah, the fact that those lasted the whole time, yeah. Yeah, that was like, that was incredible. I don't think people are, I think people are kind of undervaluing Gillahans in this. It's true. We've seen several of them go by. I feel like that's a really easy one for me to pick. I mean, whenever I play like a, a PE deck or something, Gillahans is almost a. a cornerstone of my uh, economy. I don't like going the Grail route, uh, just mainly because Grail ice is expensive. But the next ice is pretty pretty cheap, you know, silver and bronze. Uh, gold is is probably unplayable. Uh, <laughs> what did you just take there? I think it was between uh, market research and something else. Is a, I think it's a piece of Grail ice, and he ends up with a TMI, I believe, which is interesting. See, he'll fan out, so... He has plenty of ice. He has some econ. Uh, right now, with what he's looking at there, I would concentrate on getting... He has plenty of ice, I feel. 
uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces of ice. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of it's playable. Uh, There's a data pike in there. Data pike and a roto turret, it looked like. But his econ's a little light, so I concentrate on that. Like I see a melange or something, maybe that'd pop sure. up. Well, uh, we'll see once we get into this new third pack. This is one of your best chances, I'd say. Yeah, maybe he just fans out the cards, let us look at and evaluate, and then we could ridicule him mock us, you know, mercilessly after, afterwards. Well, there is a melange and a... A uh, subliminal. That's subliminal. interesting. I would take the melange, I think. I think it's like a brain trust there. Yeah, brain trust isn't bad. He, he, he might have decided on the route he's going and is just trying to clear out his agenda density. Uh, but... Yes. Looks like a lot of a uh, three twos. Yeah, I, I feel like you'll see plenty of those that they're like. Some of them I place higher than others. Brain Trust does nothing when you score it. Um, uh, ABT is always a gamble. Uh, Vitruvius and Atlas both can be over advanced and have a little bit of extra value in my opinion. Uh, Bill the same way, uh, but Brain Trust just a not that it's bad. It just doesn't do anything when you score it. Uh, Trick of Light here is interesting. I don't think it has much to go with it. Hostile infrastructure and pad campaign and breaking news. I think I take the pad campaign. Well, I think he took an Oak Town. It looks like a was that the agenda of the Oak Town? I uh, think it was. That's I, he passed up a pad campaign, which seems yeah. crazy to me. It's a bill. Uh, Grindle refinery, I believe. Uh, blue level clearance is actually interesting here. Uh, I think I would take the blue level clearance. And he's thinking about the Beal as a 3-2. Or what did he take? He took the blue-level clearance, okay. I believe. Sure. Boasted about Oversight. Oversight's kind of interesting. Uh, House of Knives doesn't do a whole lot. And that's, I think, the the new agenda that came out of Universe. The future is now. That actually might be really good in draft. You guys search for your key piece of economy. Sure. Uh, NAPD. Capital Investors. Beanstalk. Oh, I'd snap take that Beanstalk. Beanstalk seems good. Do it. No, no, the beanstalk. Do it. I'm surprised that something like a beanstalk lasted. Maybe other people took econ, and then the rest of the econ is what's left because they're filling out their ice or agendas. It could be. Uh, I think it's a will o wisp on the end. Uh, no, it's some kind of asset, neutral asset. Uh, it's actually not a bad pack. The MAPD is interesting. You got a shock or a trick of light. Trick of light. Took to capital investors, which better than Sundu in this, but. I think I just are going with a short thing and going to Beanstalk. If you get that behind a piece of ice they can't get through, though, you can make some money off True. of it. I mean, if you put it behind some, some, some cheap binary ice early game, yeah, uh, it can make a difference, too. Yeah. It could do well for you, at least early. The key with the draft, though, is that you have almost no consistency, right? Well, <laughs> you... Yeah, I don't know. If you draft your deck well, I think you have. I think you have plenty of consistency. I think that's what you try to get. I think that's the, I think that's the whole goal. It looks like a snowflake. Snowflake seems pretty good right here. Uh, can't tell what the other two pieces are. Pieces of ice I don't really play. What's also <laughs> funny about draft is that you see a lot of cards that you never play with, and so you have a hard time recognizing them. So here we see Yigura and Hadrian's Wall. I think Yigura is fine. Yeah, Yigura seems good. One, I mean. It, Cheap ice always seems good to me. Actually, paper wall doesn't seem bad right there. That's, that's true. It might not make the cut, and there's nothing wrong with that, but first turn, put, plop in front of R&D, buy yourself a couple of turns so they get a, a barrier breaker. Yeah, seems 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 like there could be worse cards. And going into the last pack. And now, as a reminder, uh, the draft packs or dra draft decks are minimum 30 card size. Uh, and so as Corp, you're probably going to want to play with 34 cards. Because uh, you're going to have uh, 15 points, or 14 or 15 points worth of agendas in there. Or is it 15, 16? I can't remember. I believe so, it's 14. Yeah, 14, 15. So um, if you want you know, an optimal agenda density, you'll put 34 in there. So uh, six cards. Oh, and then you get uh, seven cards in your starter. You get five prior X and two private contracts. Yep. So there's going to be several cards that you draft that you're not going to actually put in there. Breaking news. A couple of three twos, another Ash, and that's a medical research fundraising, which and actually, I don't know if I would money. take that. It is money, but giving the court, giving the runner money is also, I don't know. I don't think I'd play it. Uh, Botic labor seems good here. 
especially with all his three twos. But it looks like he took a green level clearance, I think. Maybe, yeah. I think so. It's hard to, it's hard to tell for me, for me to tell. He does fan through those cards pretty quickly, but yeah. I think he has plenty of ice. Uh, I'm not sure about his agenda density count, but he wants to get at least seven three twos or four twos. Uh, another mental health clinic, a Grim, which could be devastating. Eliza's toy box, a Matsubaku, a uh, Bifrost array. Yeah, that's, I think I take the mental health clinic. That the health seems good. Grim also seems pretty really good. Grim, Grim wouldn't be bad. And it looks like he's going with Himatsu. I think he took the Baku. I think I think so. Like it was hard to tell. That is a root, I believe. A mm -hmm. uh, bunch of Wayland ice. Seems to be a, he's, he's been seeing a lot of ice. I feel like. Yeah. Well, so, June bug, a subliminal, subliminal maybe. Aggressive secretary, actually. Well, uh, that's two. That's two advanceable traps in that pack. Which is yeah. Cool. Huh. Looks like he did take the subliminal. But actually, since his agenda is he's all about three twos, sure. maybe maybe he doesn't go with the traps. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think he did pick up some uh, decent econ. Uh, it's hard to look back and remember what he drafted, but uh, I think he's gonna have an okay deck. I mean, it's I, I feel like I'm not qualified to to analyze a a draft deck to know if it's good or not. Because whatever I draft, I feel like it's just kind of a mishmash of okay cards. And it's hard to really see, like, a, a, a focus to it, if that makes sense. Uh, so you got your general strategy, what right. we talked about a little bit earlier. But another thing you want to go with, you want to go with synergy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I like to go in the next route. If you see a bunch of next dice, you got some synergy between them, and they work off each other and make them stronger. Um, and you just want some other, like, oh, I got this, you know, upgrade, and gels well with this asset or you know stuff like that that's just you know uh, when you got when you got the choice between ices go for one that has a little bit more synergy mm -hmm. uh take another successful might not be bad that looks uh it wasn't successful it was no. something else i think it was an operation uh it wasn't a sweep i thought it was a ghost branch but i was like uh, you can't can. imagine wanting to take a ghost branch there yeah, i don't think it was a ghost branch it was i can picture the art in my mind i don't know the name What's an enigma or a quandary? It's a quandary. Quandary, okay. Quandary is actually pretty good. Man. Yeah, I think. I, this is that Shinobi, I believe, at the very end there. Uh, uh, it might have been. Yeah, I think I think that was a clone retirement, as the agenda in I, there. I feel like Corey is pretty solid on his agendas at this point, and he really what he needs is Econ and, well, I guess he's got plenty of ice to choose from. I, I feel like this is going to be a deck where he's definitely going to put in both private contracts. I think he would have to. Uh, well, now we get to the drags of the packs. Sometimes we'll see a surprise in there, but for the most part, it's which piece of bad ice do you want to put in your deck that you're not going to play. True. And uh, let's see, what, two left? A That's a geothermal and fracting. A RSVP, interesting. He takes the RSVP. Yeah. It does something. Mm -hmm. it's, actually, it's actually not bad in front of an asset. So you put that in front of the capital investors, not bad at all. Or just even mm -hmm. as the second ice in a server, as long as yeah. it's not the last one. And he ends up with... Uh, Cards Arcology AI. Yeah. And uh, probably that is his deck, so we get to take a, qu a quick gander through it at this point. Um, or that, that's actually his, his pool. So we'll see him build. And now we're going to go ahead and jump onto the runner cards. So the runner starts with uh, Force of Nature, mm -hmm. uh, Pipeline, and Aurora? Aurora? I think I think that's No, it. not Aurora. Uh, Pipeline, Force of Nature, and the other really bad one. I can't remember off the top of my head. This is the core set, uh, co Code Gate Breaker out of uh, Criminal? Um, no, that would be... Peacock? Peacock. It looks like he takes a Liberated Counselor to start off. No, I think it is Aurora. Aurora breaks barriers, Force of Nature I, breaks... I don't think it's, it's, it's Aurora. Oh, okay. I'm mostly sure. Uh, because I remember putting together the, the decks and thinking it was Aurora, but it wasn't. Okay. Um, and then the Econ option that comes from the starter is uh, Armitage. It you get two Armitage and, yeah, one each of the really crappy breakers. Looks like uh, he takes an inject there. This is, uh, for the runner, it's very interesting. There's a, definitely a lot of, like, 
uh, security testing and some other consoles like uh, Grimoire I take pretty highly just because the MU boost is so good. Mm -hmm. um, and did you see what he just took there? A liberated accounts. So he has two liberated. Man. I believe. I could be wrong, but I believe he took two liberated. He might have. Yeah, that was. Uh, he went through that one pretty quickly. I was I was typing the name of the card. It's a Faust. That's interesting. Uh, it's a Black Cat and an Otman. And that looks like a modded in a hemorrhage. Hemorrhage would be cute here. Modded? If that's a modded, I think that's probably a decent pick. Yeah, it is a modded, but it looks like he's going with the Otman. Uh, uh, forged. Deus Ex and a Torch. Probably the Forged. Uh... Grappling hook's interesting. Personal touch is interesting. Uh, I think you take the leg work. Yeah. That can be devastating to yeah, the corpse. Yeah, leg court. work is an I'm surprised the leg work lasted that long, honestly. Yeah. I, I, I think there's only, like, uh, one or two in the whole cube. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the runner cube that well. I think there's, like... I don't think there's any account siphons. I don't think there's a Desperado. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Grimmar is probably your, one of your better consoles as far as MU to cost ratio. Uh, I don't even know if that's, you know, data suckers are usually really good. That, that, oh, of course. Yeah. Always. E even, even in draft, they're still good. Um, so it looks like we're most of the way through the first pack. I'm just waiting on uh, to finish up with. Sometimes there's hang-ups. And uh, just a shout-out to everyone who's tuning in and watching. Thank you all for watching. I, uh, I don't know how many of you have done drafting before, but it is uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a very different way of playing Netrunner. And it's very casual and laid-back, and usually some crazy stuff happens. You know, so some, some, some fun and crazy things. You got a lot of options to go. I've seen people do the Chameleon LLDS out of draft, really? and I've seen uh, seen stealth, uh, see some crazy stealth decks. Um, seen just I go more typical, just uh, breakers and stuff. But uh, always end up always in always gear. I'm always leaning towards the uh, Anarch cards, mm -hmm. so my decks always end up looking like you know an Anarch deck. But I think it's just because I'm familiar with them and play with them a lot more, so that's why I gravitate towards. Uh, it's an incubator, a feedback filter, and a lock pick, I believe. Interesting. He took the incubator. I think this was for his virus, too. Yeah. Incubator's not bad. I don't know what he could Oop, combo with. That's unusual. Uh, well, anyway. I think I was like, I don't know, two garbage cards. I shouldn't say garbage, I should just say niche. <laughs> take a look. Oh, it was a, he took oh a retrieval, retrieval run. run. Actually, I think not it was bad. A tinkering, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think so. He only ended up with one liberated account. So the other card was, uh, I couldn't tell what it was. Uh, so I think oh, we're no just. Worries, I don't think he's got any good breakers yet, though. So true. He needs to start working on uh, some sort of. You got one Otman, which probably won't carry you all the way through. Uh, I think right now he wants to look for some data suckers uh, and rest of his breaker suite. Uh, so Ross, Ross, a Darwin. Darwin's interesting. Uh, Dirty laundry, daily cast. That's Ooh. a really good pack. That is a really good card. Uh, some great breakers and some good econ. I think he went with a burst econ, overmine, and daily leak reversal, Shahrazad, and a fairy. That was really good. I don't yeah. know what I would have taken out of that. Dirty laundry. I think personally, I like daily cast just because it gets you a little bit more, and you don't have to. It doesn't rely on you having to make a run. I suppose. Actually, I think I would have gone with a fairy just to give you that freedom to run aggressively in the early game. And not have to worry about, you know, being killed or, oh, it's an Aesop. If he has, ooh, an Imp, that's really close. He took another Dirty Laundry, it looks like. 
Couldn't, I can't say it's bad. I, I probably would have gone with the imp. Uh, and seeing how he bypassed the imp, I think that incubator that he drafted before is probably going to be a dump card. Yeah, and this one looks inter He has is that? Uh, looks like a. I think it's a quality time. No, it's a, it's a blue card. Could be a decoy. That's oh, yeah, a, decoy, a decoy, and I think a, I don't think it's a Leviathan. Leviathan. Uh, oh, Groat. Mm -hmm. Groat, yeah. Might, might not have been bad to take there. Lock your sentry down. You just got to get some MU at some point, and with, you know, over 20 cards left, you're bound to find some. Uh, there always seems to be plenty of MU. It's a lot of Cyber Solution mem chips and such like that. Another David, Queen's Gambit, fun. a Levy, and an Armitage. It's true. There are extra armages in the in the the draft. I think I also had a comet. I um, might have taken the comet there to get the console out of the way. Eh, probably not. I don't know if he's taken a lot of events yet. I think he just saw another. I think he might have drafted a David. I couldn't tell what he grabbed. Um, but yeah, he does need to start thinking about breakers. He's got two dogs in that pack. Uh, Cujo and uh, Rex. Rex seems pretty decent here. I think Rex is okay. A vamp, a ninja. I think we'll have taken the ninja there, but he went with the vamp, which you know he could be planning some shenanigans. Blackmail, which is or is an infiltration. Uh, I didn't see it, and he takes an inti. Interesting. Well, it's a good barrier. Well, it's a barrier breaker. Yeah, I, I wouldn't <laughs> see it. It's good. It's he, a token. He he covered it. He's sure. got that. <laughs> he can break some barriers with enough money. He needs a lot of money. I don't know if he has enough money. Ooh, an Escher. Ooh, that looks like you take the Escher. Toolbox is cute, but probably not going to be game winning. Escher will will most doubtly win some games. Um, and I do believe he has a tinkering. So, well, I don't know how how, how helpful it would turn out to be, but DLR and I think you go with the Gen just for the extra MU if you need it. Sure, because he hasn't taken any extra MU, I think. So and later on, if you pick up a medium or a nerve agent or something, you can have a little bit of search for it or a data search sucker. Search for your incubator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they they have. <laughs> so he has to pick up something. Oh, a lock pick. That's probably not going to make the cut. Yeah. He'd give a thumbs down when he, when he drafted it there. So he has a David and an Inti. And what he starts with. Thing, oh, that was an inject. Oh, it was too liberated accounts and an inject. Okay. okay. Yeah, he did. He did an inject pretty early. Yeah. All right, going into the third pack then. Lucky find, wanton destruction, maker's eye, dinosaurus, another inti. It's a pretty good pack. I think I would take the maker's eye. Seems good. Um, I mean, because you really need some sort of win condition, right? Some sort of yeah. Command. You want you just games won on excesses from the runner. You know, they want as many as they can get. I, I wouldn't say Lucky Fine would be bad. I think Maker's Eye is slightly a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm right, he has another pack after the thing. This is the third pack. This is the third pack. Dyson right there. Keyhole is interesting. You go completely for that strategy. Uh, Trading. Fall guy, I think. Is that? Looks like he's got Mr. Lee there. Mr. Lee's in there. I think. Is that? Uh, Tustron. Tustron. Looks like he's taking the Tustron. Yeah. Makes sense. Because you need some sort of you know way to get the right card that you want. I almost want to take Keyhole there just so nobody else plays it. Mm -hmm. You got Eater. Ooh, if he had he's taken the Keyhole and then the Eater arrived after that. I mean, somebody is probably going to do that. Someone's going to take Keyhole because they feel like they have to, and then eat it right after it. Yeah, there's a Forge activation order, so I think that's pretty strong right here. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to take the Eater because somebody is has a Keyhole. You don't want to give it right back to back. I made that mistake before. Yeah. God crushed me. Yeah. But uh, I think that's two Forge activation orders now. Yeah, that's that's good. You're putting a different kind of destruction. And, and it's nice because uh, when you're playing draft, you can maybe not necessarily rely on the corp to be poor, but they're going to have trouble with economy. 
more so than a, um, a constructed corporate. That's a personal workshop, a day, day job, a night, Ooh, uh, Mr. Nights. Lee, and uh, I want to say a s study guide. A diesel is interesting. Nerve agent. Nerve agent. Uh, a spinal modem. Eh. Spinal modem probably be okay. Quality time. I think it's a Zona Zul shipping there. Uh, there's a Parisha. Yeah. Oh, and then a sacrificial construct. Yep. Um, but yeah, Zona Zul, I think, is what it is. Um, and what did he grab, actually? I think he took the. Was there a quality time? Yeah, there was. That's yeah, I think that's what he took. He has plenty of card draw. I think he's still light on breakers. He has a Knight, an Ottman, an Inti, a David. But uh, Rex. Did he end up taking the Rex? Okay. Yeah. R&D interface. That's it's pretty late for that. Yeah. That's a wild side. I don't know if that's a great idea. No. <laughs> he's got. He's got inject. He's got okay. RDI. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. At least it's something. He has inject into retrieval run, which is good. Mm -hmm. A ghost. Oh, that's a John Mazzanari. It's probably Trimoff. Trimoff is actually pretty good in draft, in my opinion. I think I think it's a little bit better. Uh, I think it's a little bit better than John Mazzanari. Uh, just because you get situations where you just want to check the ice and mm -hmm. you're willing to end the run, and you always got to clear the tag, so it kind of gets annoying. And these are kind of like the the leftover cards. I don't think any of these are going to be high impact. Uh, trade in. It came back to him. <laughs> he planned for it. And we got one more pack to go through. <laughs> you end up with a pawn. Yeah. <laughs> but my my card thing is completely acting. Up it's okay. It's showing it's showing irrelevant cards, much like what you picked. So sure. so it's fine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, now it's showing something, which I did type in. All right, this is the last pack. I think the other thing you do as a runner, you can kind of play into the breakers you're given at the beginning and kind of just go more on economy and pressure and just say, I'm going to have crappy breakers. I don't, I don't think that's a horrible thing to do. Scrubbers there, Plascrete. Clone chip? I think I take the clone chip. Decent, clone chip seems really good, especially yeah. with what he has, a David and a knight and an inject. Oh, true. Um, yeah. Shentis with his forged this is also probably decent. It might be a little bit too combo-y. Gorman Drip. Uh, yeah, I think clone chip's the best pick here. Mm -hmm. I would agree. There's a Rex in there, too, I believe. I don't know what he ended up taking. I don't think it was the, uh, I think it was the Gorman Drip. I could be wrong about that. Seems like a pretty, a pretty good pack, though, at least. It looks pretty decent. Compromise employee, the source, medium. medium there he goes. Almost Security goes testing, nerve agent. That's He gives him something for his gin and his incubator. He has a little combo going there. Yeah, medium is a great pick. Just need some breakers to go with, with it. RDI, be yeah. So that, that gives him something of a win condition, especially with James, so he can tutor for the medium. Yep. Now, really, yeah, like you said, he's just got to get the breakers uh, to make those runs efficient. Uh, how is this econ looking so far? I mean, he's got the uh, two liberated, which is pretty good. He, so you start with two Armitage. He has the two liberated. Uh, I think he might have taken a Gorman Drip, mm -hmm. uh, which is pseudo econ. Uh, and the forged. Uh, Right there. I think he probably needs to pick up some econ here. Uh, I've had worse would be kind of be like an insurance card, you know, just in case you go against the net damage or the Scorch deck. You got a little bit of insurance. Looks like he took DDoS, actually. He likes that card. Visage is good here. Grimoire is probably what I would take, especially with the medium and everything. Uh, 
Uh, he took the symmetrical visage, which is probably probably the right pick. I would have taken Grimoire. I would have probably been wrong. Did he take visage? You said. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was symmetrical visage, which. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with this thing. It's busted. Oh well. It's good. I'm learning the art on these cards yeah, yeah. that I never see. Yeah, it's cool. All right. Uh, Fem. Fem. Fem seems really. Yeah. Plus, yeah, it's just really good. So. And that's strong, too. Oh, I would take the demo run. I would so take the demo run. I'll do it. Do it. Live the dream. Sneak door is probably better. And he doesn't really have an HK multi access, does he? No, he, but he, he has, has. He has leg work, actually. He has leg work. He has medium, though. And medium with demo run can, can be fun. Very true. And he probably. So right there, that's actually not a bad pick. Also an easy uh, mark. Yeah. It's like. So it looks like he took the. Uh, what was it? Might have been the fem. I know it was the previous pack. Uh, oh. No, there's a, that had a fem in it too. Oh, yes. I don't know. I don't know. If we took that one though. Uh, this is Earthrise and another Inject and a Dyson Mem chip, I believe. Or that's a. Uh, uh, no. Dyson Fractal Generator. Oh, that's what I meant. Yeah. Taking uh, the breach, which is it's an okay uh, tractor, or yeah, tractor. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fine. Um, it's not worse than Inti, so. <laughs> and getting to the bottom of the barrel here. Yeah. So this amazing card will be. I'm looking forward to it. It's always a fun card. What are you stuck with? Rachel right. Beckman. All right, Rachel Beckman. Seen worse cards. That's true. It's probably not going to make it, but it's an interesting card. Oh, he, I think he did end up with two fems. Yeah, he does have two fems. Yep. Um, I think only one David. Yeah. But he has a retrieval run, a test run, uh, the night. His breaker suite's interesting, but I think he can get there. That's actually. I think he still has one more pack, right? Or two more packs? That's oh. it. That was it. Oh, that was it. That was it. All right, so he's got his starters, and now we're get to uh, going to see him build. So, um, uh, so yeah, here we go. So it looks like he's going to build his runner deck first. Uh, and I think he's picking out the cards that he's not going to want. Maybe he's just sorting them. Because uh, you would never want to show people what you're going to be uh, drafting, actually. Hey, Sean, I'm usually lazy and just go right into it. <laughs> um, but at least we get to go one by one and at least see what kind, of, what kind of sort of stuff we have. So we got events, same old thing, incubator, true run. What is that? That was a, that was a paintbrush, maybe? I think it was a paintbrush. Was that? That wasn't the empty, was it? No. Okay. He put That's it in the program the stack, so I guess it was a paintbrush. Lockpick puts, oh, well, hardware, okay. Uh, it's true, he doesn't really have much hardware. And, uh, oh, he took a Rook. I didn't realize that. And these are his starters. So uh, the only extra MU he's running, I think, is Jin. That's the only thing he drafted for extra MU. Yeah. So he's going to be a little bit tight on MU. Um, but, I mean, Jin to host medium is pretty good. Yeah, and he also host David, mm -hmm. so that's good. Uh, it, it, it can work. Yep. It, it, Jin is almost like a pseudo console. So it looks like he's pretty program heavy. I'd, I'd be interested to see if he chooses this incubator or if it gets cut. Looks like he put it sideways, probably indicating he's sticking. Uh, I think the paintbrush did not make it. Yeah. Inti, he's thinking about it. This is, I mean, he's got breach, uh, which only works on centrals. Incubator, he's he's still mulling around. Mm -hmm. Aurora, force of nature. No, oh, that was that. Oh yeah, that was Aurora. That was er uh, yeah, Aurora Force of Nature and Pipeline. Definitely gonna take the Liberateds. Yeah. I think he takes Armitage. Yep, both Armitage. I feel like two Liberated two Armitage is pretty solid for economy. I don't know if you really need much more than that. Mm. Uh, maybe oh so you got the dirty laundries. Oh if you, if you're gonna be playing the bl vamp play. Yeah. Then yeah, you do need money. And with the two, actually, this is a pretty interesting idea. He vamps and then forges everything. Yep. 
Uh, especially focusing R and D, and they need as medium slash RDIs for the win. Yeah, this I'm, I'm really interested yeah, in this, this runner deck. It looks like it's shaping up to be pretty interesting. I think he can actually put something really nasty uh, together with this. Yeah. Uh, I think the 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 janky part might be with the programs. Could be. Uh, he has a lot of card draw. I don't think the quality times gonna make the cut. Mm -hmm. um, because you, you just want 30 cards. You drafted 40. You started with five, and you want to probably play both Armitage. So, you know, you're looking at 45 cards. you got to cut 15 of them out. Uh, and then you just hope that the uh, other 30. See, I'd cut the John. Yeah. I think double vamp seems good if that's going to be your play. At almost any card that you're able to get two of seems really good uh, to be, like, central to your strategy. So your forges, your vamps. Uh, your fems, so you're gonna have the test run retrieval run. Uh, it looks like he's passing the retrieval run actually. Uh, it's still there in hand. DDoS looks like he's not gonna be making the cut either. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's cute, but I think you gotta build your round a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, it's unfortunate is basically it's one time use. So basically, you have to set up one huge turn where you get to run a bunch of stuff. Now the good thing is he has it in his deck, so somebody else doesn't have it in theirs. Very true. <laughs> And I think there is only one in the queue. The RDI might not make the cut if he goes with the medium. Probably don't need both. You probably go with the medium and the gen so you can search it out. Two fems is kind of pricey, but, you know, consistency is good. David uh, probably goes with the... I think is Rex's only decoder? <coughs> uh, that in Force of Nature. Well... So Rex is his only decoder. I believe so. And Fem. It can break one. <laughs> it looks like he's going with Force of Nature. I think he kind of has to. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to want to use it, but. No. Uh, he might get by with just Knight and Fem, but you want to have. I don't know. You just run into that person that drafted all the next uh, bronze, and your day is wrecked. <laughs> It's true. There was uh, some next dice in there for sure. There's nearly a complete set of next, I think. I think there's only two next gold, maybe. And, uh, you know, I don't know how the cube's set up, but in draft, you d you're not limited to three copies of a card. So if you draft seven next bronze, you can play all seven of them. That said, this cube does not have more than three of any card. Okay, fair enough. I think it's possible to have, I mean, obviously you have five Pryrex in your court uh, agenda suite. So you could have five Pryrex. And also... I think there are two extra Armitage in the whole cube, so you could theoretically have four Armitage. Yep. But other than that, you're not going to have a bunch of multiples. Okay. That makes sense. So It's kind of interesting. Sometimes what I do when I have a really rich pack is I just go through and try to find 15 cards I don't want to play <laughs> and then just shuffle the rest together. Seems fair. So it looks like what we're looking at right now is maybe the... Well, so, okay, so these are events. No, DDoS is a, a resource, I think. Yeah, D that's, oh, that's a little bit of everything. That's, that's his, uh, I think that's his, what am I going to play out of this pack? Sure. I feel like not playing Retriever Run could be a mistake, especially with the injects and yeah. the two fems. Yeah, I think, I think, actually. And also I not playing RDI either. Interesting. I could see not playing the RDI if you're going to back up, if you got the medium. Mm -hmm. I could see it. Uh, it's probably not. Correct. I don't think he needs the Rook. Well, I, I think the Rook is uh, going on this uh, pseudo ice destruction route of being able to forge things really nicely. And uh, Vamp, basically, so it looks like he's putting on a, a, like a heavy, uh, uh, a heavy economic pressure sort of build. Yeah. Um, so he wants to be able to pressure R&D really hard. And so he's basically taking everything that lets him do that economically. Lotus filled wrap around Willow Wisp. Next rotor turret restructure. I think that was a data pack actually. Oh, it was a data pack. Okay. Uh, so while we're looking at this corp deck, we've got some word from some of the uh, the challenge decks. Uh, so Aaron uh, Connick, it turns out he was playing the collective as his challenge deck, and so far he is three and zero with it. Um, and I believe it is just a vanilla collective deck, so 55 cards, 5 influence. Um, that was pretty impressive. So right now we're going through the sorting process. What is that card? That's a red herring. Oh, red herrings. That's what it is. Yes, good call. 
and then yeah, for contracts. So you got you got that all situated. Now we're gonna look through his econ and see what. He, Probably needs to go with the agendas first, so you know how many cards you're looking for. True, and I feel like he's pretty set on agendas. I don't think he's going to be taking uh, any of the prior X. Or he might be taking like one. Uh, these structures I auto include, I'd say. In turns, seems good. I doubt that Sucker Graphics is going to make the cut. Yeah, I don't think the close the counts or the cycle will make the cut. He is including successful demonstration. Did he draft two of those? He did. I uh, don't know if he put it in the shipment from San San, which seems in. Yeah. All right. So Fetal is two. Uh, Atlas is four. Or I feel like he's he's going to go with all of the, the three twos. So let's see. Fetal, and then two brain trusts, Atlas, and something else. Really? Oh, Those are oh, all the agenda oh, secrets? Oh, yeah. I, I thought he took more than that. He has a TGBT, which is only a one-pointer, so it doesn't really do much. Oh, here's more, I think. Am I miscounting something? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh. So two prior X is six. And Fiddle is up to eight. Uh, brain Trust, Brain Trust, uh, Atlas brings you up to 14. So he can play the TGB. TGTBT? Yeah. Did he draft one? I see a market research. Oh, that, that's what I'm thinking is. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought that was a. So I think he plays the market research. So it looks like his agenda. I think he's he's feeling pretty pretty settled here. He's going to take two Pryrex, uh, an at the Atlas, two Brain Trusts. Oh, did he just put the Atlas down? Oh, that was at Oaktown. Uh, Oaktown. I think the Oaktown you play. Yeah, so Fetal, Oaktown, two Brain Trusts, uh, two Pryrex. Is that right? I think I might be missing one. Two brain trust, a fetal, uh, two Pryrex is 12, and an Atlas is 14. Yeah. All right. He's got some econ. It turned out with, with a decent amount of econ. Yep. That's not too bad. He, he might be okay. I guess we'll, it'll depend on what his ice is that he manages to get. So a Lotus Field and a Wraparound. Roto Turret. I'll say Roto Turret. You said it was Data Pike. Um, there was a data pike in there somewhere. I think he just took the paper wall. I think paper wall is not bad yeah, in draft. It's interesting, he's not going. Okay, he is going for the wrapper. There's the data pack. Is that if that's the snowflake? Might play the snowflake over the paper wall. It's more taxing for sure. I mean, it stays around. Yeah. And I mean, you. It's one to res three strength. I mean, it's basically a wall of static in terms of taxing. Yep. For two less, seems good. Having said that, not being Nisei Division, people can use it just to tax you and fire the side game and force you to bid one every time. It's like a white brain almost. So he's he, at, has, he has a reasonable amount of economy, I think. He's at 31 cards right there. 32. He's at 32 cards right there. And I'm looking through the dumps right now. It's too bad that the will o isn't going to make it. Looks like. And that's 34. All right, so let's take another look here. I think he has a... a, a, a Zodiac ice in there, I think I saw. A little Sagittarius or something. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I could have missed it. I didn't see very close. He did take the snowflake, it looks like. Yeah, that's fair. Something you can throw out early just to tax him a little bit. Buy yourself some time. So it looks like this has a pretty a pretty reasonable composition of ice and uh, and uh, uh, economy. Maybe not quite as much economy as he wanted. Um, agenda density is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven agendas, six or seven. Uh, let's see, one Atlas, one Fetal, two Brain Trust, two Priority Rex. I think that's right, yeah. Yeah, so we're right at six, mm -hmm. uh, 34 cards. Not too bad. I'm, I'm really interested to see how this runner deck goes. If, it, if the, the plan here of R&D pressure and uh, economic pressure pans out, it looks really cool.
So it looks like the drafting process is done, and uh, we're probably, at least for Corey, and we're probably going to have to wait for everybody to finish up the draft. Um, I don't see Josh here yet, but I assume, I think he's stuck in traffic. Uh, we'll probably want to get an update from him soon. Um, so while we're waiting for this to, to finish up, actually, you know, Corey's coming over here. I wonder if he wants to do an interview about his day. You can, we can ask questions. Uh, but in the meantime, um, uh, so for those of you who want to know more about uh, drafting, um, stimhack.com has a great guide about uh, how to put together a cube. Uh, you can also look up the stimhack.com cube on their forums. Just go to the cube drafting section, uh, and you'll see, I think it's pinned there, and you can see basically the exact list uh, that we're going to be playing with. Um, Looks like Corey's taking one last look through his uh, runner deck and his uh, maybe, uh, is he considering some changes maybe? I don't know. Well, he does have a diesel that he didn't play and a retrieval run and an inject. It's, he, has a, he has a lot of good cards. I like I like the, I like his runner deck. I do. Yeah, uh, corp deck. I feel like he's so so, but runner deck looks really interesting. To me. I think he's. I, I'm really interested to see how this plays out. And uh, our first game is going to be uh, watching Corey at least. Um, it looks like he's trading something out. It looks like he added a diesel and he took out a fem. Uh, he's really yeah. <laughs> Wow, he has a lot of good cards. Yeah. Honestly, if you, if your deck is such that uh, you choose not to include a diesel, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't think I could do that. Uh, and it looks like uh, the first of our three challenge decks the, has been defeated. Uh, I think Ton uh, beat the uh, the HB basically hyper fast advanced Professor Agenda deck. Ah. Um, that was able to take a one uh, or singletons of agendas from other factions. Um, that's pretty interesting. So it sounds like uh, we are about to get uh, get underway for the actual draft itself. Um, in just a second, or we're going to have it take a, a quick break, and uh, we're going to get started onto the draft itself. Uh, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we will get started with the draft itself in just a moment. Um, Pacer, thank you for joining oh, me on this. Well, thank you. I'm glad I could be here. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for watching, and uh, we'll be back with round one of the draft momentarily. 